Right, thank you for being uh, the Thousand Monkeys. Uh, you all are the Thousand Monkeys. This is one of the Thousand Monkeys. He's the Thousand Monkey 456, uh, Thousand Monkey 2. I take my hat off to you. Uh, right, I shall start because that's how we do things. We kick me off. I lower the bar and you all say, I could do better than that Irish guy, for God's sake. <laughs> Alice has decided to piss off to the toilet when I said that. Here we go. Right, how poems come to be wrote. Uh, this is called In the Aftertime, which is, if you know your Alice in Wonderland, is In the Aftertime, I will always remember this and say to my little girl and everything like that. So, uh, Guilford Shakes were doing their version of Alice in Wonderland. I don't know if you've seen it, they've got a brilliant director called Charlotte Conquest. Charlotte Conquest does remarkable things. She does promenade theatre, which means that you start in one venue, you go to another venue, and you end up in the last venue. So, their Alice starts in St. Mary's Church, which Dodgson actually preached from the pulpit in, and uh, that's where he died and he was taken to be buried from as well. And then it goes up to the museum, and that's part of the show as well. And then the trial scene is up in the castle in the keep. And you just move and move, and you go with Alice, and Alice leads you by the hand across the road and stuff like that. It's an absolutely brilliant production altogether. So I really like that. So I was going to go and see that. Um, and at the same time, I was looking at the internet, and there is only one known photograph of Billy the Kid. And he's... He's standing in the background doing like, hey Billy, come over here, boy. And he's standing, he's look cute like that. He looks like a punk. And he holds his Winchester rifle out like that. He's got a gun stuck down here. And that's the photograph you have. Only known photograph of Billy the Kid. And they've just found another authenticated photograph of Billy the Kid. So a guy goes into a shop in New York and he buys all these old Western type photographs. They're called tintypes because there's an emulsion put on a very tin plate. Um, it's what done the, the Civil War, the Wild West, because you just can get into a covered wagon and do this stuff like that. It existed up to uh, about 1890 before it went out and the other means of photographs took over. So a lot of the photographs you get will be tin type photos. And surprising people get their photographs taken. So this photograph that this guy found was a whole lot of Wild West outlaws playing croquet. <laughs> and you think croquet is such an essentially English game. It's Alice in Wonderland. It's pink flamingos and hedgehogs and stuff like that. And it's so English. And yet, who's playing croquet? Billy the Kid and his gang. And they stop for a photo. Okay, <laughs> boys. And Billy, what is Billy wearing? What is your outlaw wearing? What do you think Billy the Kid is wearing? He's wearing a cardigan sweater. <laughs> and that's how it's described. The one in the cardigan sweater, stripy one, is Billy the Kid. And you think, car blimey. And they've stopped, and one of the outlaws is going, as if he's arguing a pint with Billy. And this photograph was bought for a few dollars, and it's turned into a $5 million photograph. And you think, how surreal is that? How come Billy the Kid and the gang are playing croquet of all things? And the answer is very simple. It was a craze. 1865, the year Alice comes out, the rules of croquet are written. You get the first rule book written. Uh, croquet is King Charles II's time. Pal Mal. Why is Pal Mal called Pal Mal, Mal Ali? Because Pal and Mal is ball and mallet in French. And that little area was where the king used to play. Pal Mal. And that's why it's got its name. How did croquet come to England? Oh, come on, it came from Ireland, of course. <laughs> Believe it or not. Because uh, croquet uh, goes back ages and ages, but uh, in Brittany. And it comes from Brittany to Ireland. The Irish gentry take it up, and by 1865, it's back in England. And it's become the quintessential English game. And it was only superseded because that newfangled thing, well, old newfangled thing, tennis, uh, eclipsed it. But before that, it was croquet and croquet. Uh, I have here a letter from General Custard, or C sorry, Custer, as you know, and when he's not getting uh, massacred by Indians, he's writing to his wife. And he says, Dear Lucy, or whatever his wife's name is, when you come and visit me, please bring a field croquet. Because it's extremely popular. It's the first game that man and woman can play together. 
and be polite, although women are devils for cheating. A typical cheating shot, shot in croquet is spooning. Now, Eddie, you might think that spooning is when you cuddle into each other and everything like that, back to back and everything like that. Yeah, when no! Your, when your elbow goes dead. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but spooning in croquet, uh, croquet. Oh yes, in Ireland it was called croquet. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when you take a shot, uh, croquet, uh, croquet is very distinguished because you hear that mallet on the ball and you go, croquet, and it's like, spooning is when the woman pushes it through without actually hitting the ball. So you don't hear that audible click. And that was the big woman cheat. And women became very vicious in croquet and very competitive uh, in order to win. So all these things I found out just from looking at a picture of Billy the Kid playing croquet. So this is called In the Aftertime. Alice thought she had never seen such a curious croquet ground in all her life. It was somewhere near Roswell, 18 something and something there or thereabouts. And Billy and Kane, the boys, had just paused in their croquet for a tin tag photo. Billy's the guy in the cardigan sweater. Him and his gang, the regulators, are posing like they were prototype for Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, or the band called The Band, pure Americana. Billy, the cardi cowboy, and his gang of croquet playing outlaws not exactly how one would have somehow imagined them passing the time. One of the outlaw uh, gentlemen points out that Billy, the kid, has spooned the ball. A ricochet of tobacco-colored spittle hits a spittoon. Silence congeals about the accusation. Now, whether Billy has merely pushed the ball silently true rather than soundly hit it is neither here nor there. A cold revolver clicks and I says I hit it, I hit it. Get it? The other gentleman outlaw begs to agree. Okay, Billy boy, keep your cardi on. And so we leave them there in the croquet craze of 1878. Time like a yellow ball hit through hoop after hoop until it arrives at this present now. And a photo found in a store for a dollar or a few dollars more repays the expense by morphing into the five million dollar photo. But I hit the ball back through hoop after hoop after hoop until it arrives at Billy's boot. And a voice cries, okay kid, play. <laughs> Now you might have noticed that uh, I'm wearing my Halloween mask. Uh, this is called monkey nuts. I don't know what you call them here. I guess they're peanuts here. But in Ireland, monkey they're all called monkey nuts. And, I, and then I come here and it's all peanuts, peanuts. And I thought, what happened to monkey nuts? So this is called monkey nuts. This is about Alex. He'd chosen the mask himself, cried for it for Halloween. But now come the witching hour and the eagerly awaited trick or treating, he refuses to wear it. Explains in all seriousness, when I puts it on, I scares myself. All night, death on the door knocks, but we don't answer it. We hide inside and eat loads and loads of monkey nuts. Thank you. <laughs> Two little ghosts. Two little ghosts shuffle down the street, looking very frightened. A gang of skeletons break out into a clatter of laughter. A girl gal and a boy gal hold hands, dressed in their best mouldy school uniforms. A moon laughs at a bunch of little devils, who should know better but don't. Witches are a bit more scarcer on the ground this year than last Halloween, thinks the real ghost, amused at the humans dressing up in their greatest fear. <laughs> and finally, uh, a vampire poem, seeing as we're in that uh, era still, but a vampire poem with a difference. My friend had cancer and she died a very, very slow, agonizing death, and she said cancer was like a vampire. She was a Hannah Harvey fan. And she said, cancer is like a vampire, it comes and sucks your life and your soul out. So I wrote this for her. It's called Drinking Your Blood. So still, entranced by the vision of your own dying, your body offers itself up to me. I taste the flavor of your life, drink your dreams, savor each memory. 
the delicious tang of longing, smell the sweet desire to live, swallow your soul whole, your body now no use to me or you, a broken doll left out in the rain. At best, I kept my promise, there will be no more pain. Thank you.